Ah, hi YouTube, how's it going? Well, Navita have released version 2 of the Navigator app for iPhone and Android. This is exciting news. Let's have a look at why Navita are building this new app, what's in it, and how it's going to be useful for you as a pilot. The Audi has been an immensely popular device in the gliding world, but it's built on an ancient platform, Windows CE, that was developed in the early 2000s. The software that runs on top of that is called CU Mobile, and that was actually uh, created well before Navita even created the Audi, and can run on any Windows CE device. But the devices are old. They were developed well before iPhones were even invented. Touchscreens at the time were resistive type, hard to use with a finger, fancy multi-touch didn't exist. The touchscreens were resistive type. They're the ones that are difficult to use with your finger, hard to be accurate, easier to use with a stylus, and they had a dim screen because of the technology that was used. Most of the devices had no built-in Wi-Fi or 3G, 4G cellular connections, so all the software was designed to not run with internet connectivity. Meanwhile, the world has moved on to iPhones and Android devices with amazing, huge, big, capacitive touch touchscreens, bigger batteries, built-in internet connectivity such as Wi-Fi and cellular connections. So things have really moved on. Navita have managed to keep the Audi platform up and running for a surprisingly long time. They've done lots of improvements over the years, such as improving the screens and the brightness of them, adding extra battery in behind the device, make a thicker version, lasts a lot longer, doesn't need to be powered while you're flying. And then they've even added uh, internet connectivity to some extent. If you've got an Android phone, you can connect it to your Audi and get the internet that way. Saying that, the CU mobile software is brilliant to use while flying, especially for contest flying and task flying. It's had 20 years of development put into it, so it does a lot of things very well. So why not just bring over CU mobile to iPhones and Androids? Well, there's a few problems with that. One, it would take a huge amount of time and effort to do so. And do you really want to spend all that time and effort bringing over that software that isn't designed with internet connectivity in mind. So the new app, CU Navigator, is the solution from Navita. They're basically rebuilding their navigation app from the ground up to work on Android and iPhone devices. It'll be designed from the beginning to have great internet connectivity, but it's a work in progress. It's been 20 years of uh, development time put into CU Mobile. It takes time to bring that over to a new platform. Okay, so let's have a look at a few of the features built in. First of all, you've got super simple navigation to a waypoint. So I've already loaded on here a whole lot of waypoints. Let's uh, choose one to go to, say, oh, here's a good one, a little airstrip called Forry Papa South. Click on that, choose which waypoint it is precisely, tell it to go there. And now it gives me direction, distance to the turn point. These fields are of course customizable, so you can choose which one goes where and what you want displayed on the screen. As you can see, you can move around the map super fluidly, nice and fast, much faster than an Audi. You can also rotate the screen. I tend to fly north up, but you can uh, choose whether it's track up, north up. You can click the compass there to change that. Zoom in and out, you can also push these buttons rather than trying to drag on the screen, which might be easier while you're flying. Click the recenter to center back on the middle of the screen. As you can see here, we've got some weather information displayed. You can choose what's being displayed by clicking the uh, layers menu there, and I can choose whether or not I'm showing wave information from SkySight, for example. So in the layers here, you can choose what type of base map you've got, whether your satellite view, or a terrain view. In here you can customize which of these you have quick access to. So it's well thought out and very flexible. Under the menu here we can go and change settings. You can configure which aircraft you're flying. If you swap between aircraft a lot that's useful. We've got a logbook so you can see all your flights. Settings 
in here you can configure things like what waypoints you've got loaded, which maps you've got loaded, whether you're showing airspace, things like that. And you can go and configure all the uh, for all the nav boxes. You can configure what's on the screen. Do you want to see the compass rows? Which orientation do you want the screen? What's your safety altitude for getting to turn points? In here you can connect to external devices. So if I turn on the Nano for example, Nano is now on. I can come in here, Devices, and as soon as the Nano becomes available, it will connect to that. I can turn off the built-in sensors to make sure that it's using the Nano sensors instead for the GPS. And I'm assuming if you connect to an S100, you'll also get uh, things like airspeed, which will help us make more accurate calculations. The nav boxes, you can configure these. If you hold down on one, you can go and edit it. Save that. If you want to move it, whoops, move and resize. You can then drag them into wherever you want, and you can resize these things to any size. You can drag the corners and customize till your heart's content. If you want to add a box, click the add, and it gives you a list here of all the uh, possible nav boxes that you can put on. For example, you might here are some OLC ones. For example, you can see how how big is your closed OLC. Choose what color it's going to be. How transparent is the background? Add it to the map. Resize it. Maybe I'll make that a small one and put it in that box there. And they snap into place, which is nice. So much more modern, easier to use than the, uh, the traditional Audi. So let's run through the features. Basic navigation. So you can use it to get to a turn point and it'll tell you how far away you are from that turn point. Super fast and fluid modern maps. Weather overlays. Now because it's got internet, it can get live weather and data from the internet. You can customize all the data that's being displayed on the screen, just like you could with the previous uh, apps. The app has built-in logging, so it'll log your flight. New in version two, you can connect to Bluetooth devices such as Nanos. You can see OGN traffic on the map, so it gives you basically a long range uh, flam view. It integrates into CU Cloud, so you when, once you get back, you can upload your flights to the internet easily and even upload them to OLC. And there's a thermal assistant. You can see your track and optimize your uh, thermal flying while you're doing it. So for basic casual flying, this is perfect. Unfortunately, there's a few things it doesn't have, which makes it less appropriate for contest and task flying. In particular, you can't put tasks into it yet. Now, obviously, this is a key feature I suspect Navita will be working on in the near future. Because there's no tasks, you've got no task information, such as how long you've been on task. So for AAT tasks, it can make life a bit tricky. You'll have to do your timings manually on your watch. There's no IGC logging, and quite frankly, I wouldn't expect this to come to iPhones and Android devices, unless Navitar were to make their own Android device that they can uh, secure to the IGC specification in the future. There's no way IGC approved logging will come to iPhones and Android devices. There's no iPad support. So this means you can't split screen the app on an iPad. So if you're planning to use this in another light aircraft, uh, you won't be able to do that easily. So although it doesn't have an IGC logger built in, you can combine this with a Nano to get more accurate GPS information onto your device. Or you can just have the Nano completely disconnected. Use Navita to navigation with its own GPS. Use your Nano to record your IGC log file. And you've got a good combo there. So how am I using it? I've been using version 1 in the cockpit as a uh, backup to my main LX9000 on the dash panel there. So if the power goes out in the glider for any reason, uh, I would be able to use CU Navigator as an alternative backup option to at least get me to the waypoints that I need to get to and get me the right distance away from waypoints. That is the key information you need to complete a task. And so this can do that in its current state. Once they add the contest features, uh, such as being able to load in tasks, it'll be a lot more useful and easier to use in that 
in that role. Generally you need a CU subscription to use the app. Actually downloading the app is free. They do offer a free trial, so you can try out the app for free. You can use CU Cloud and analyze the last flight you took. And then if you want to be able to analyze and log all your flights, you need to upgrade to the full uh, subscription service. So in conclusion, I really can't recommend anyone buys an Audi in this modern day and age. The devices are just so old, the technology is so ancient, and they are very expensive still. Really, you're paying for the software. CU Mobile is still a very good platform for flying. It's just a shame it's let down by the hardware. So this is well worth trying out. I think for a lot of, especially non-contest pilots, if you're just a casual pilot, or you go out for a casual flight, this will be more than you need. And the advantage is you can upgrade your, your screen and your phone in the future. So for those reasons, I highly recommend trying it out. If you're interested in putting weather on your new Navigator app, have a look at SkySight. We've got a coupon code below that will give you two months discount off your first year's subscription. There's a link below for that. And don't forget to check out our merch store if you're interested in any uh, t-shirts or the new sweatshirts we've got. That's a great way to support the channel. Okay, thanks everyone. Hope that's useful and we'll catch you next time.